Hey guys, uh, this is just a quick YouTube video, a spur of the moment type thing. Uh, I will not be telling you how to stop being poor in this video. However, I want to talk to you about the poor mindset because I see it it's so prevalent and it's absolutely crazy. Uh, and, you know, although I'm not going to tell you how to stop being poor, we can start making decisions today that will help tomorrow. So it doesn't matter where you live, and it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter what you do on your free time, poor is a mindset. Now as we go into this, guys, if you like this type of content, check out the description box below. Let's talk about it in the comments section below. In the description box, you can see how you can support this channel through things like my Patreon, my knife brand, Exodus Knife and Tool, or other things. Um, <clears throat> so I myself am not rich. Uh, in many places in the world, I could be considered wealthy. For me, to be wealthy is to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And a huge uh, aspect of what I want to be able to do is spend time with my family, homeschool, and uh, live an alternative lifestyle. For me, that is being wealthy. Uh, there is another YouTuber here associated with the CIA, allegedly, who uh, tried making fun of me and calling me poor, but he lives packed into a subdivision. He goes and works at a meat factory every day. He does YouTube videos in his closet, and he can't go to any events, any trainings, or anything else because he is too busy just actively, I don't know, working, trying to make as much money as he can, trying to gain as much clout as he can. Uh, for, for So for, I'm where I want to be. Now, what, 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 what caused this video here is a Facebook post, and it said... Uh, oh no, the stock market is crashing, and this is only going to affect rich people. Uh, and then it shows SpongeBob, and it says me living paycheck to paycheck. The point being that they're going to be unaffected because they don't have any massive investments. They're living paycheck to paycheck anyways. And this is a poor mindset. Unless this person changes how they think about poverty, they will be poor until the day they die. They will work a regular job. They will be on a W-2. They will only ever make enough money to get intoxicated enough to make them think that they are enjoying their life. And maybe they'll even be able to chase down some hooker that isn't their wife and cheat on their wife. And that will be the... Uh, epitome that will be the climax of their entire life uh, as demonstrated you know I I talked about the problems with uh, with the idea of what they had presented and the response was oh so you're telling me that if I go invest the hundred dollars I have in my pocket right now today that I won't be poor anymore GTFO man that's stupid that is just really, really stupid. Now, I've been talking about this recession that we have been in for a long time. And if you've got a couple of brain cells to rub together, you would have seen during uh, Trump's previous uh, time in office that a recession was coming and it was going to hit really hard. The indicators were there before old Donald Trump uh, and the longer the government kind of pushes things back and keeps interest levels kind of low, the worse this crash was going to be and is going to be. Uh, if you track the economy, a lot of times the uh, economy going into this kind of a cycle leads directly to a world war. And then we kill off enough people and in the process everybody forgets about the economy and it gets reset. Um, but the, the, the sheer stupidity of this post is 
it stems from the poor mindset. Yes, there's going to be a lot of rich people with a poor mindset who lose everything and become destitute, probably. But what's going to happen if the economy collapses is those who are actually rich, they're not going to go die in the war. They're not going to go, they're not going to do any of that. That's going to be, that's going to be the peasants. And they will be at home buying everything that they can for next to nothing. And when the economy resets, these people that are like, oh, I'm not going to be affected. Only the poor are going to be, or only the rich are going to be infected. I don't have any investments. When this whole thing resets, these same people are going to be like, I can't afford to get a house. Rent is so expensive. How did this happen? Well, uh, you were smoking a few packs of cigarettes a day, drinking every single day, working some job, uh, and living it up laughing at the rich while, while those with a couple of brain cells were going out and purchasing assets for pennies on the dollar. Okay? And so likely... Uh, What, what, what needs to change here is instead of looking at a situ any situation as a uh, problem that makes, it, makes you incapable of generating revenue, what you need to do is no matter what the situation is, you need to look how to win in that situation. So when the economy has completely collapsed, that is opportunity. And when the economy is strong, that is opportunity. Uh, you know, oftentimes the very best products and the very best tools and materials are manufactured in an economy that is absolutely horrible. So for instance, right now, you just cannot beat the prices on a lot of knives and axes and tools and gear from Poland or Ukraine. You, you can't touch it. The amount of skill that's there, uh, the, the society that is there, the culture that is there, mixed with the economy that is there and the value of the currency, you cannot touch what you can get from there here or anywhere else, really. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are not in a stage of capitalism where we will take advantage of that. However, what that has created is an opportunity for people to run these companies and make absolutely top-grade uh, uh, tools and gear for absolutely nothing, paying employees maybe the same or better than anybody else and getting rich because they have skilled and cheap labor. Now, our skilled labor in America is dead. It's, it's, it's a pool that's it's been used up. Of, as much as I absolutely hate the term late stage capitalist that gets thrown away around, and we are not a, a capitalist country, it's, it's so stupid, but this, this form of late stage capitalism that we have today, uh, we have tapped that resource entirely. But the wealthy mindset is looking ahead and hedging your bets. So how do you do that? Um, well, first off, for one, you invest using other people's money. Uh, that's something that you work towards if you can. Uh, maybe this is, this, is, this is regular advice. I said no matter what job you do or no matter where you live, a wealthy mindset can exist. I'll get that to, to that in a second. But for most people, uh, find a way to invest in something with somebody else's money. So no, that does not mean the $100 in your pocket. Uh, that means uh, working over the long term to be able to have access to a loan and have a plan that is worthy of a loan. So if you are the person that only has $100 in your pocket, chances are 
you can get a loan at your you're on a w-2 okay you're on a w-2 you're paying taxes like a normal peasant uh, and you have a hundred dollars in your pocket chances are you can get a loan uh, in the next year or two if this is the way the economy stays and you can buy yourself a hot dog cart for three to four thousand dollars brand new or you can make one yourself for six or seven hundred dollars you can start working that hot dog cart on weekends, working social media, building yourself a brand and a following, start making yourself some money, generating some capital until you can quit your job and ditch that freaking W-2. You, person watching this, you can do that. But guess what? These investments that the rich, uh, the people that make themselves rich, the people that make themselves wealthy, they do come with risk. And you have to think ahead for that risk and you have to consider a safety net. You have a safety net. The only people that don't have a safety net don't want a safety net or aren't considering all of the things that can be a safety net. And that is the homeless. If you do not have a home, and you are strung out on drugs, and you're living under a bridge, and you're on a corner, you're making more money than me, first off, on that corner, most likely, and you do not have a safety net. I don't know how you're watching this video, but there you go. Everybody else, you have a safety net, but you have to be creative and think about how that safety net's going to be woven, and you might have to get over your pride a little bit. Does that mean that if things go wrong, you're gonna have to sell everything and move in from, with your parents? Well, then be ready to sell everything and move in with your parents and start over again, whatever it takes. You've got more kids, you've got this, you've got that, whatever the case may be, that's fine. Make a safety net. Work those weekends, invest in yourself, invest in your family, invest in your future. But the thing, that at the end of the day, what you need to be doing is you need to be looking at the situation, looking at the economy, you need to be looking at the gaps and looking how to fill them. So when, when I talk about you can be anywhere, any job, any place, there are some of the wealthiest people that I know, by my definition, can barely read or write, and they grew up in a primitive community. They're the hardest working people I know. They run businesses and they have way more money than I do. And they work way harder than I do. And they set their mind to something and they do it, but they have all of these blocks in their lives because where I am able to read incredibly quickly and to take in massive amounts of information from text very quickly, uh, generally speaking, uh, and I am able to uh, consider uh, some of these concepts and do some of these things, and that's not their strong suit. That was a butterfly, I think. What they are able to do is they are able to figure out how to build things, how to make things, and how to turn profit. They don't need words to do it. You can be a kid with no education in the ghetto. There's always going to be in the lowliest of places somewhere some person who has figured out a way to take advantage of the situation around them because what they are thinking to do is how to use the disadvantages of other people to their advantage. And so this is also the reason why a lot of your wealthy people are narcissists and a lot of your wealthy people are people who are the one person who's doing really well while everybody else is fan. It's why they're freaking evil people a lot of the times because they can look objectively around at how to manipulate the system or to use other people to their own gain. They don't feel bad about it. It's a lot harder to get to this point if you're gonna keep everything above the table. Um, it's a lot harder to do all of these things if you care about doing these things right and not screwing people and being ethical. Uh, however, no matter how impoverished any situation anywhere in the world is, there's someone who figures out a way to rise above uh, and, and to become wealthy. Uh, so 
what you have to do is you have to change the way you think of things. And instead of th looking at something and saying, I can't afford that, you look at something and you think, how am I going to afford that? Or you look at something and you think, that's going to get in the way of my investment goals, and it's not worth it. Uh, this, this, this whole thing, uh, you know, and this, this all pops up for me because for some reason, all of these, the, the way that Facebook works, it wants to drive, uh, the algorithm wants to drive discussion, it wants to drive arguments. So I get all of these socialist and communist posts that pop up on my page from these just absolute mouth breather or directly fed operated uh, controlled opposition type uh, freaking communist pages, uh, propaganda pages. And they, what they're doing, they exist, not only do they want to get people to have discussion in here, but they're, they're driving peasants into a little frothing mouth frenzy. All of these college kids who never had any of these things explained to them, who thought that they were going to take out a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars in debt to the government at astronomical rates, and that that was going to be a great idea. They were taught, you were taught from preschool that that's what you need to do. That is your government thinking ahead and thinking about how to use a whole bunch of absolute morons who will never earn a cent through an original thought in their life and programming them to give them all of their money for their entire life. Have them take out hundreds of thousands of dollars in high interest loans, drink most of it, live frivolously, uh, have their expectations of college involve nothing more than trading STDs and devaluing themselves as a human being, and then give them, them some stupid job where they're up to their eyeballs in debt and they're paying that off to the government their whole lives, and they never have enough time to open their stupid eyeballs and look around and realize that they're being used like a freaking cow. Instead, they will rage in support of this government and in support of getting more handouts uh, and more benefits. And the government will just use them their whole life as just this literal perfect cash cow. The government as incompetent as they appear to be, is using useful idiots to create a base of power where otherwise there is no power. These morons have no powers in and of themselves, uh, but they can create power in this way by uh, becoming uh, wage slaves for an entire lifetime and promoting uh, that particular type of slavery. Uh, so. You, you can be in the ghetto, you can have no education, you can be uh, Amish or Mennonite out in the middle of the farms who cannot use electronics. Uh, somewhere out there, there is either a situation or people to be taken advantage of. Uh, your moral code will dictate how difficult or easy that will be, but in my opinion, when you take out extremely long duration loans, you are investing in the economy doing poorly. Uh, so you get a hot dog cart for $4,000 and you pull out a 10 year loan, a 20 year loan. That three to four thousand dollars, it might cost you fifteen thousand dollars, but if your monthly payments are freaking eighty bucks, as inflation continues and the value of your currency absolutely plummets in almost no time, your loan has devalued itself. Get a fixed interest rate, by the way. Your loan has devalued itself while you're making money. You're making today's money using 
years from now devalued money. So the money you're making today is worth exponentially more than the money at the end of the loan duration you are investing in that. Whereas if our currency had ever actually increased in value, you would never want a long-term loan, right? You would be cash, 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 staying away from loans, or you would be trying to get loans from suckers because the interest uh, would be so good. But we will never see that because we changed it over to a fiat currency because this whole, this whole um, slave system was pre-planned. And, uh, you know, like my neighbor over here, Oh, this is never how Social Security was supposed to work. This is how Social Security was always supposed to work. You were just stupid enough to buy into it and to believe the lies. But if you, if you, if you thought about it objectively and opened up your doggone eyeballs and looked around and looked into how, what it was going to cost you to pay into this for the rest of your life and then what you were actually going to get back from your investment, uh, you would have opposed it. We're talking about someone actually basically old enough to have been involved with that. Anyways, guys. I hate to say stop being poor. It's just, it's the connotation to that is the rudest and most ignorant thing ever. However... Stop being poor because it's up here. It's not what's in your pocket. It's what's up here. You need to have a wealthy mindset. You need to use the cards that have been dealt to you to your advantage. That's all I've got for today. Again, uh, Exodus Knife and Tool, no questions asked, lifetime warranty on standard options. My knives are made in the USA, and I think they're some of the finest and best value knives available on the market, uh, considering uh, the options. Um, Beach and Tactical, I designed a rifle sling in Afghanistan. I think it's one of the finest working slings uh, because it works the best for me. I designed it to work a specific way, and that's what I like. Uh, I will make those. The prices are about to skyrocket on those because I have not diligently kept up with inflation. Um, and uh, Patreon, affiliate links, whatever. Uh, you can change your situation. You just have to be clever and be hungry you have to want it you have to be willing to work if you're sitting around and you can't think further than the hundred dollars in your pocket and you're not willing to do anything more then go get a w-2 you'll always be poor it's not going to change and as you make more money you will still feel poor and you will still be living paycheck to paycheck. Crap, I freaking live paycheck to paycheck. But um, that's because I the more I make, the heavier I'm investing. But um, it's, it's just never going to change. And people get to 50 or 60. Some article was just posted about a Vietnam vet who's been working now at McDonald's for like um, 30 or 40 years. And he's like 85 or something like that. I don't know. And he can't afford to retire. That's because you never cared to afford to retire. Until now when it hurts. Um, this man, I am sorry for him, most undoubtedly had a uh, poor mindset. Uh, man, this stuff... it. You know, and I, I, I guess I've been, I've tried not to be derogatory. Um, and it is hard for me. Because uh, I'm like, these people are freaking stupid when this pops up. But nobody's ever talked sense to them. I'm probably not the first person to talk sense to you, whoever is watching this. But, um, but you know, if I am... It, it's just like uh, tactical training. 
mindset, tactics, skills, gear. Whether you do bushcraft, survival, just camping, knives, gear, guns, tactical stuff, military even, everybody's sitting here focused on the gear. The people talking about the economy and, and how they are going to be poor, this or that, or the other, they're sitting here focused on the gear. Guys, focus on the mindset up here. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I hope that you have a blessed day.